Hey guys, welcome back. It's time. We haven't in a while looked at Reddit and uh, th this series has sort of, uh, it's sort of a vault. It started out with, uh, is, is Reddit giving good advice? Also, maybe giving some of my own advice. Take it as you will. Uh, I'm just here to, to, to let you know what I think. Now, uh, we're going to go through here. Uh, there might be advice on some. There might be some commentary that I just feel like I want to make on some other stuff. But regardless, it'll be entertaining and hopefully useful to some of the people watching. Uh, I know especially for new collectors, this can be pretty helpful. Again, you don't have to agree with me 100% on any of this stuff. Uh, it's fine to disagree. If you'd like to disagree down below, if you think there's a better method for any of the stuff that I am going to say, maybe we'll read like the top comment on each one see what they have to say uh, about what's going on before we start down below at the top of the description i know some people have been saying rattle why do you have so many discount codes why you got so many links you're you're sending us you're sending us deals now what what is going on here uh and yes I, i've had people um i guess at most points say like hey rattle can i send you some money no you can't do not send me money if you want to support the channel I would rather you shop somewhere where you can get a good deal on stuff. Uh, if you want to click on here before you shop, if you want to use the discount codes, these are all places that I would recommend that you can get some good deals. You can make some smart purchases. Stop buying the mystery garbage. Stop buying the friggin' stuff on whatnot, the razzle dazzles, all of that stuff. Make some smart purchases. Those links are available for you. Uh, awesome stuff. Maybe get a discount on stuff. Support the channel at the same time. Win, win, win to the max. First to post here by Mike, a.k.a. Earl, who says, How long has quality control been like this? Okay, so this is a weird thing. A quality control or a card condition straight from the pack is this weird double-edged thing. I remember when Hidden Fates came out, people were complaining that the card quality was too good. They were concerned. All the graded card collectors were like, oh, this uh, this is not good for anyone. Everything is a 10. Everything's a PSA 10. Other people are like, oh, yeah, I want everything to be a 10. There's probably a happy medium there. Uh, we've seen some pretty bad quality control come out of certain sets, especially reverses in like some of the Sword and Shield sets, certain print waves, where they just had crisscross applesauce all over them. Japanese can have the same issues. We've seen lots of texture shifts. We've seen a ton of the uh, reverses in the special Japanese sets um, that, uh, that have lines and, and stuff all over them. So... Uh, yeah, there's a happy medium. Of course, you don't want stuff coming out of the pack that's all jank to, to oblivion. Uh, but also, I see people jumping to conclusions, I guess, about the entire print run, the entire company in general. Uh, just based on one pack, they get a damaged card, and they're like, what the hell? Everything is garbage. Uh, I open this one pack. My hit inside it is jacked to the extreme. Now, there is some of it, and uh, usually if you're opening from the same product, if you have a booster box and all the reverses are dicked, it's because they all came off around the same time. Like, it, it, the packs are seated in order uh, when they when they put them into the booster box. So chances are it came from the same print, unless there was, like, one print that stopped and they had leftovers and they got it. You know what I'm saying. For the most part, if you have it from the same case, if you have it from the same box, if you get it from the same place, you probably have the same wave. If you got it from the same place at the same time, it's probably the same wave. All right, so I'm one... Of many hit by the nostalgia bug by the 151 collection. One thing that's really struck me is how bad some of the cards are coming out of packs. Has it been this, like this for a while? I pulled the Charizard finally last night and it looks about as bad as my base set one that was manhandled as a kid. I also got the Zapdos, which has terrible scratching straight out of the pack. The biggest head scratcher was the Hyper Rare Mew that, although perfect condition, was upside down. Is that common? Felt pretty odd. Yeah, sometimes there's upside down cards. Sometimes you get weird seating within the pack itself. So it doesn't mean it's necessarily resealed. Uh, especially not if you're pulling Charizards and, and Zapdos. Uh, they're, they're probably not tampered with. Always buy your cards from someone reputable. Buy your cards from someone that has no means. No benefit. Will not benefit from screwing you over. Whether it's searching the packs. Whether it's resealing the packs. Anything like that. You can get good deals without going in a back alley and pulling your pants down. I promise. I just just stay away from it. If you're collect, if if you have a sealed collection, uh, even if if you don't plan to sell it, maybe you don't want to sell it anytime in the near future. Keep your receipts from where you purchased it. Uh, you don't need to do whatever happened to that like case wrapping nonsense that uh, that they were doing, where it was like, oh, this is a real case, it's like BBC E style, where you could buy a case. Was it David Adams that was doing that? Are they still doing that? 
You don't need to do that. If you're the only owner, you build up a reputation for yourself and you have the receipt from where you purchased it originally for not very much money and you keep it all that time and you can say, hey, no one else has owned this. It was mine since the very beginning. There was no basic, there's, there's no big store that's going to screw you on something like that. Like they're not going through modern MSRP Pokemon card packs and resealing to find like the big hits. It's just not going to happen. Now, someone with enough time that's shady enough or someone that has it later on when it's more expensive very much could be a thing. I don't know how we diverted into resealed stuff like that, but some pictures for reference looking at the Zapdos and the Zard and Zapdos, would they even qualify as LP? They both look pretty rough. Both the backpicks are the Zard with bad whitening and a pretty bad scuff on the bottom. The Zapdos actually looks way worse in person. You can see silver gaps on the face from any angle. All right, so Zard looks fine on the front. Again, if you're going to ask and show people condition of a card, you probably don't want to have it in 17 layers of plastic. Um, here's a little ding on the bottom. That's going to happen. Unfortunate uh, that it's on that card and not something else, uh, but uh, definitely possible. We got a little bit of edgy wedgy. I mean, this is not this is not a new thing. Uh, we've had like jungle jungle fossil. A lot of the um, silvering that was on the front of those, the hollows, when they were brand new, a lot of them had it. They all pretty much had it uh, to the extent that it's kind of expected uh, because the blades, if the blades are not sharp, then they're not going to be good. So, yes, probably whatever packs you got these out of, maybe they got janky, they got lazy, they got they needed to change the blades there. I don't know what's going on with Zapdos's face here. Um, I'm going to assume that's not part of the artwork. Uh, you get scuffed. You can't. You can't see it there whatsoever. So I don't know about this all angle thing, but maybe it is and maybe it does look worse in person. But yeah, it's it's gonna happen. You're not gonna get a perfect card every time. It's a sick nasty if you do, if you're one of those grading boys. Uh, but uh but yeah. Even Japanese isn't immune to this anymore. It still isn't as bad as English, but man, some of the print runs terrible. Indents, scratches, and whitening galore. So I mean it's 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 always kind of been a thing. Certain runs, certain sets, whatever they did. They botched it up. Again, the edges are mostly due to the fact that the the blades that cut the cards are not good. That they need to be swamped out or sharpened. Whatever they need to do to them to make them cut nice and clean. Uh, the ding on the bottom of the, the card is the, is just the fact that maybe it happened in packaging. Maybe it happened in, in the factory after it cut when they were putting the cards together into the booster packs. Next... What we got? We got a sufficient underscore road underscore 5386 who says got these from a 1000 yen 7 USD vending machine in Japan. Be careful uh, with the, I mean, again, this is one of those things where it's like the motivation is the motivation there for wherever you got this from a vending machine. We've seen there are definitely sketchy vending machines in Japan. Uh, a lot of them, you know, they sell that garbage that uh, it's like a mystery box or whatever. Why is it every time anything's mystery? The more mystery it is, the more garbage it is. I, they're making money off the mystery crap. They're getting rid of, usually getting rid of stuff that they don't want. Uh, but in this instance, this could easily be someone that's loading up a vending machine. Uh, it, it's, Japanese is very weighable, very searchable. Um, the gun pack, you, you can even weigh the box. Uh, and and there'll be a difference there uh, from what I've heard on, on, on some of these products that have gun packs or god 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 things available. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so just be careful with this. I mean, seven USD also seems like very expensive. If he's saying seven USD per pack, um, that is uh, that is pretty pricey. At least they didn't they didn't take the the V Max out of it. I don't know what's going on here. Um, regardless, I don't know. Don't don't buy loose Japanese packs uh, unless you see the box opened. I guess, and you're splitting it with friends. Um, and even if the box isn't opened, if it is sealed, you got to be careful that they didn't reseal it and take out the big, uh, the big hit. Ask me how I know. We have no comments on this. My comment is, don't do this. Don't buy this. Go go to an actual shop or somewhere reputable. A lot of that is weird. A lot of that people are like concerned that like some a big store or someone that, like even a game store themselves. Like if it's a reputable game store. They don't have they don't have time to open packs and and make money. Even Snee from Blake's Breaks didn't have time to didn't bother to take the time to to reseal the bottom of the vivid voltage packs because they they just needed to know what was inside. 
still giving away the hits. It's not worth stealing the hits. It is worth it is worth it in in their case with the Blake's break stuff to rig gambling that was associated with the pack because the gambling was so much more expensive than the packs themselves. All right, what we got here? We got a big feet, a small PP. Who says purchased a vintage binder for $120? Let me know how I did. New to collecting since childhood. I don't know if I have I don't know if I have the audio here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear it. You always gonna have a football game on or the radio on or something when you're flipping through Pokemon cards. So 120 bucks. It looks like we got we got some decent stuff here. A lot of it's just like base unlimited. We got a little bit of Japanese. Uh, there are some hollows there at the beginning. So I mean, yeah, I think it's pretty good. Uh, you didn't. Um, you're not exactly a uh, Poke Millionaire or anything like that. But we got some cool old Nintendo era reverses, EX era reverses. Those are pretty cool. Uh, that Entei looks like it's pretty pretty dicked up, but we get the Mawile. Very classic, very awesome. It's hard to tell uh, condition, and it, I mean, you can't even tell that Mawile's hollow just based on the uh, the video itself because it's in the plastic. They all look like they're in pretty good shape, except for that, that Entei looked like it had a big crease through it on the front, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh-oh, we got gray borders. We got world championships. Uh, be careful with the world championship stuff, although apparently those are worth money now, some of them. Which is wild to me that it's, it's just like a pre-constructed deck where you always get them. Uh, but I guess when the price of certain cards, especially like gold stars and stuff like that, get too expensive, people for some reason want to pay a lot of money for world championship stuff, which is, it blows my mind. It, I, I don't put any value in them, so... It's a little bit wild to me that uh, that others do. We have no comments on here either, so we're going to make our own comment, and that comment is, uh, you did pretty good. I don't know about the, we got Digimon in the back here. Uh, cool story, cool rattle story, story time. Uh, I, I bought a Pokemon collection at one point in time. Uh, I saw that there was some cool stuff in it. There was a Gold Star Mew, uh, and I saw like a Charizard or something. Uh, but uh, it, it was a good deal. It was a good deal uh, to, to begin with, uh, the, the Pokemon cards that were in there. But also, never underestimate the non-Pokemon at the back of a binder. Because I got the, uh, the, there was a bunch of the Animal Crossing Amiibo cards. I thought nothing of them. But then when the most recent game came out, they were usable in that game. So those, like, spiked in price. So I ended up selling those. Accidentally made a bunch of money off of the, uh, the, the Animal Crossing amiibo cards that were at the back of the binder, especially like the the female uh, wolves and stuff like that. Man, people want to bone the crap out of them. I don't know why you would want to do that to a poor, innocent, little uh, fuzzy animal. But, my God, there's a premium on them. They got expensive. Sold those. I ended up selling those for what... I, I mean, it was, it was probably years later. I don't know how many years it was, but... Uh, essentially, the, the Animal Crossing cards more than paid for the entire binder. So you got like Mew Gold Star. You got like some some sick nasty. Uh, I don't know. It was like the Plasma Zard. Um, there was a few Charizards in there too that were really good. They all ended up in my collection, but it was kind of neat uh, that the Animal Animal Crossing cards ended up being more valuable. I don't think they were very valuable at the time, but when the new game came out, uh, people were like, were after them. So that was a pretty cool pretty cool thing. So the Digimon there at the back. I thought about like the I don't think the Digimon boxes are very expensive, uh, but it would be it'd be cool to see uh, binder sets of those. It'd be kind of neat. All right, we have a Wolf's in NL who says saved Pokemon packs. So I thought I was under the impression that uh, these were just like okay, I already have these sets. They're mixed products or something like that, or they're just setting them aside. Uh, but they say I save my Pokemon packs. They open and this is the result. So I don't know, if, is this the hit binder? And then the rest of these are just open packs. But it look it looks like the cards are inside them, which is a little bit confusing. Um, I, are you are you opening the top of these and, and putting the cards back into the booster packs? That is, I I think I, I can think of one other person uh, that uh, that does that. And why? Why? What? What? Just get some four row bulk boxes and. I mean, you can still save the... If you want the pack wrappers, you can save the pack wrappers. But why are you putting the cards back in the packs? Maybe I don't get it. Maybe it's something... There's some allure there. Let me know down below if you actually do that and why the hell you do that. I wonder if a Pog was taken. What pack did you start with? We didn't get an answer. We don't get very much advice here. Um, 
this is this is weird to me but again if that's how you enjoy uh collecting opening whatever you're doing uh by all means go to town people like the pack arts uh, that's, that's why i really like the um the new uh the, they're like the pack arts but they're on a an actual card that come in the new um building battles scarlet and violet build up building battles i hope they keep doing that those are pretty cool i gotta figure out which ones i'm missing I'm missing some. I stopped opening building battles uh, because we've been doing the like mega stream openings on the release day. But but then but now I'm not get I'm not getting those art cards. So I gotta I gotta rely on the power of friendship to uh, to to see if people have them uh, so they can trade them to me. Now we got a Pokemon sticker. That's the title. That's the that's all we got here. We got BB Calvin, who um, Charizard here is getting the living hell beat out of him. He's got bandages. It looks like it's round two, and he's been bandaged up. He's getting choked. I don't want... I don't, I'm trying not to picture this as a, a sexual thing, but I'm having a hard time here. Charizard is... He's, he's getting choked, and you might like it. Anyone have information on this sticker? There's a few eBay listings, but nothing really else. Uh, we got one comment here that says, It's from a bootleg. The real card isn't a sticker. Is it a real card? Can any obscure Japanese collectors give us the, uh, the rundown on this? Please and thank you. Next, we have somebody, the uh, how did I do? How was my purchase? Guys, if you're buying Pokemon cards, even if you're buying $40 Canadian Pokemon cards, uh, I didn't see the Canadian part here before this, but if you're buying $40 Pokemon cards, please be able to look up how much a Pokemon card costs. Please. Just do yourself a favor. Do me a favor. Do everyone else a favor. I mean, it could be just that they're showing it off. They don't want us to say, hey, I'm just showing this off. Got this beauty for 40 bucks Canadian. How did I do? Uh, we got a PSA 9, Garchomp, and a Giratina GX Alt Art. The Alt Art, it's a, it's a promo. Uh, but still, desirable car, card. Cool artwork. Very cool. Um, that's pretty much market price for a 9. Uh... I guess my LCS had better deals than I thought. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, 40 bucks Canadian. I think 40 bucks Canadian might be a little bit better uh, for the 9 if you want the 9. If you just wanted the raw card, um, you can head on over to something like a TCG player after clicking the link and the link tree uh, because you are you love supporting your boy Rattle uh, and you're going you're gonna to pay 16 49 or even less than that, actually. We got 13 bucks and 34 cents. 33 cents. Um, so if you want it raw, buy it raw. Uh, if you want the nine, if you want to pay the premium on a nine, if it's worth it to you, do that. Uh, in the nine, it looks like on eBay currently what is available. You can also come on down here and you can go to sold items uh, and you'll see what they sold for. Uh, but we got $30 plus $5 shipping. We got a $39 or best offer. So maybe it come, it's probably going to be in close to the same price. Uh, remember that these people have to ship the item. Uh, so take that into consideration. And then also, if he's in Canada, then he's got to find a Canadian copy, which we didn't open the page to. Um, we can go to sold items here. Uh, you can see here that if, even if, auctions, guys. Auctions will, if you're looking for a deal on stuff, auctions, they're time consuming um, because you got to go through it and you got to find the auction for the stuff that you want. You got to figure out if you want it or not, especially in my case where I need to find out if I need the card or not. Um, we've been hanging out on Sundays looking at auctions recently. I don't think there'll be one this week, a hangout, auction hangout this week, uh, with the whole Christmas stuff coming up. Uh, but, uh, I'm sure those will continue after the holidays. But, uh, but yeah, auctions. If you go to auctions, don't, don't, make sure you know what it costs. This is extra important. Make sure you know what the card costs. Go look it up. Go look it up on TCG Player. Look it up on Troll and Toad. Make sure you're taking into consideration that you can use code Rattle5 to get 5% off on Troll and Toad. Uh, but then also just like on eBay, look at your sold listings. Look at your look at your what's available. Uh, make sure you're not paying more than what's what one is readily available for in that same grade. That's the biggest thing. It's weird to me. I we've seen it. I've seen it. Everyone has probably seen it. A lot of people have seen it. That the, the people will often they'll get they'll get hooked into an auction and then they'll end up paying more for a card than you can just go buy it now somewhere else. eBay is a very very useful tool. I know a lot of people are scared to dip their toes in eBay, but if you're buying on eBay, eBay will protect you. You got to be a little bit careful that you have to know if it's a you know a fake card or 
or a file uh, file something if if they send something else if they send the wrong thing if it's damaged whatever if it's not as described you have to be on the ball about that but if you're on the ball about that very safe as a buyer pretty much impossible to get scammed all right as long as you educate yourself about it so okay we, we we're all through that we have maddie you who says how to gift card and these singles were on sale i'm new to this so how would i do so typically these are not the the cheapest way to get especially if they're hanger packs and you're buying them as individual packs you're going to be paying a little bit more of a premium typically i mean it depends when stuff comes out usually the booster box is going to be the cheapest way to get these um, but oftentimes you can break stuff down and get cheaper packs that way too uh, if there's promos in it that are you know you can trade or sell the promo if there's uh, some kind of mixed pack product that's on sale uh, and there's certain packs that you don't want that you don't need you can trade or sell those packs that kind of thing you can get you got to get creative i think there's going to be more of that coming up here in the, uh, the 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 pokemon lessons or whatever you want to call these um so uh, if you had a gift card uh, and they were on sale we don't know what the price was nine obsidian six paldea two scarlet and violet and two paradox rift not pictured all right we got some exes those will happen Oh, uh, okay. We got an alt art Altaria EX. Pretty sick. I didn't end up pulling that. I ended up. I don't know if I traded or bought the single on that one. But we have it now. What in the. Dendra and an Iono. And a Meowskarata and an Artisan. So. I can't. Maybe they're trolling. It's hard to say. We didn't see them open it. Uh, but they did very well. As John Claude, John Claude Sanchez said down there. Um. They did, they did real good for this amount of packs. Congratulations. We have uh, Do a Moose 377 who says, My friend's first ever pack. A Golden Zard and a Charizard EX. So, uh, pretty sick. There is a little bit of a premium. There are too many versions. Uh, I think Pokemon's kind of overdone it with the the amount of versions, of, especially the Charizard EX. We've we'll, we'll got the Shiny one coming out too. Shiny one, the Shiny SIR. We got the golden boy, we got the regular boy, then we had the full art with the the silver back. Man, there is a lot of Charizard EXs. Uh, this thing is playable. Um, I don't know if it's still, I don't think it's top tier still. It might be. It's right up there. It's playable and it's a Charizard. So uh, if it wasn't for the fact that there are 16 different versions of this mother effer, this thing would be more expensive than it is. But I think even the EX is probably worth something um, at this point. Whether or not that drops off, it's hard to say. There might be so many versions that it doesn't drop off and that it isn't getting that much of a premium for being playable, and it's more about the fact that it's Charizard, but I haven't looked at it. My friend messaged me yesterday to tell me she had bought her first pack of Pokemon cards and that she wanted to know if these were any good. Double crying, laughing, sideways emojis. Beginner's luck, I imagine. Yeah, there's definitely some beginner luck aspect. Uh, what do we got here? Darja B who says, I love that beginner luck. My sister pulled a Sylveon altar from a packet of Evolving Skies. If it was it was one of her first packs, I was so jealous. Yeah, that can happen. I mean, any any pack can can do it. Uh, you can definitely hit something good. You can you can hit a bad spree too. It uh, it's all part of it. It's uh it is what it is. What do we got next? We got my six-year-old had an amazing find today. What? Where did a six-year-old find a EX Fire Red theme deck with a Charmeleon on it? This is crazy. We got the pictures of it. Pretty wild. Uh, this is by Throb Low Brown, who says, We were standing outside of his school when he went to check the library stand where people leave books for anyone to take. He walked back with this in his hand and said, asked why it was there. Still sealed besides the rip on the side. We'll probably sell it and get him a booster box. Um, now, I I mean, make your own decisions. Do what you got to do. Uh, amazing find. Easy. 100 to $150. Very cool. Uh, make your own decisions and, and what's worth it to you. But uh, if it's like the, it's, it's this cool thing that he found, um, I think you might regret in the future trading this for like a modern booster box. Um, just because like it's a cool story. Like, hey, I found this. It was free. Uh, it was already very old at the time. I don't know how old. I don't know what year Fire Red Leaf Green came out, but it's old, and it's a charmeleon. So um, maybe take that into consideration before you sell it and trade it or whatever you got to do uh, with a booster box. Uh, you might be 
You might it might be more sentimental to uh, to keep this. Next, we have a Barbatos, a Gundam who says, "My absolute uh, dopest Master Ball Reverse Hollow." Giovanni holding a fat Master Ball. Okay, we had the fart swirls before. Are, is this the new thing? The Master Balls. I don't know if there's any characters that would like have. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any. Well, I mean, it would have to be like more of like, a full art to have like Master Balls where their balls are. Uh, but holding holding a Master Ball. I guess it's not it's not like in the perfect perfect position, but it's it's pretty damn close. This is so is this the new is this the new premium where the master balls are? Or if it was like on his head like a helmet. New farts world, everyone. Alright, what wait, wait, we gotta read the comment. Rory Extra Life says this has to be one of the greatest slabs of all time. Pristine ten and the hollow lines up perfectly. Keep this until the end of time, my guy. Um, not something I would necessarily put a premium on, but, you know, people like what they like. Same with swirls. Like, I, I don't, it doesn't really, it's cool if there's a swirl there. It's cool if it's in a spot where it kind of, like, makes sense or it kind of, like, adds to the artwork. Like, if it's in the sun, if it's on the moon, if it's, like, them holding it in their hand, if it looks like it's them breathing or farting it out, anything like that, like, okay, all right, it's kind of neat, but, uh, personally, I, I, I don't put any extra value in that, uh, but, again, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't really collect that way, so, if that's what you like, if that's what you like to collect, it's the same thing with errors, uh, they don't really bone my, my pants, but, Bought this for worth $75, this is the way of making amends to my sister, because I stole hers many years ago, hope. Oh. She'll enjoy it on Christmas. That's pretty cool. Also to note, I had traded her car for basically a bag of chips and a half-eaten sandwich. <laughs> oh, no. Well, uh, yeah, hopefully she enjoys it. Hopefully she's excited to get it back. That is a, a very a meaningful uh, gift, and it, it's, it's, it's cool that, uh, uh, that, you can, that you can do something like that. Very sweet. You know, reading the attack, it feels like... If you land tails, it shouldn't whiff because, you know, it's called a giant tail, lol. Sure, the positive is usually heads, but just saying. Giant tail. He does have a, he has a, he has a pretty big tail. Next, Booster, Boostin' Beer says, Finally got my Dialga, Palkia, Arceus, and Giratina in PSA 10s. It's crazy how fast the Pokemon uh, community, I fucking hate that word, but we're going to say it anyway. Uh, the Pokemon people, the Pokemon collectors um, just kind of moved on. They've just straight up moved on from, man, Crown Zenith. Oh my God, bring bring me back to Crown Zenith. Love the set. Awesome set. Uh, these, are, these cards here with the matching kind of artworks, absolutely chef kiss to the extreme. Um, we have our Barbados. Wait, what's that? The other guy from the previous thread? We can Gundam is back in this one. Congrats um now crack them and grade them sequentially. Please don't crack these. Um even even I am not crazy enough to do that. Um uh, you'd have to send them in like twenty times probably to get them. I don't know. Is that some is that something the PSA would do? Can you get them reholdered if you pay the reholder fee uh and send them in in the cases to get them done sequentially? That'd be kind of neat, but I don't know if they if they're cool with that. I know you can get stuff reholdered, but I don't know. I don't think it necessarily changes the uh, the certain number. Interesting though, nonetheless. Um, cool set of artworks, cool cards. Uh, I'd rather have them in the binder, uh, but to each their own. If you want them in tens, I mean, a lot of the Crown Zenith stuff is uh, pretty cheap right now. Probably, I don't know. If it's uh, maybe not as cheap as it'll be. Uh, but uh, definitely inexpensive for how awesome that set is. It's very hard to complete as well, uh, so it wouldn't surprise me if in the future people want to open it and people uh, it ends up being expensive. Hard to hard to pull everything. A lot of lot of cool stuff. The glaring gallery, massive. Oh no, not these, not these these Pokemon Center machines. Every time, these are just like the scalper tier creators, scalper scalper hater tier creators. Restock instantly scalped. True story. Um, so, this is the thing. No, you should not be going to these machines and uh, hoping that someone didn't buy all of the stuff inside them. There are better ways to buy the packs. These are not the best deal. 
yes, it might seem like an easy best deal if it was in stock, if they had the packs in them that it says that are in them. Uh, but uh, I'm here to tell you that you, you don't... That, oh, there's lots of other stuff in here. You don't need Evolving Skies. If you do need Evolving Skies, there are other products that you can buy that still have Evolving Skies in them. Yes, you'll have to either sell, trade, or deal with, open, enjoy, maybe even enjoy the other packs that are inside that product. I think this on the left here actually has Evolving Skies in it, at least the old ones used to, these grass stacking tents. So while you were upset about the fact that you didn't get this Evolving Skies, there's probably one in this tin on the left-hand side. I wouldn't say you shouldn't buy 40 of them in order to beat the scalpers you probably want to buy one and check the contents of it but any of the ones that i've seen this grass stacking tin uh with the decidui on it i'm pretty sure these have evolving skies in them now the 151 booster bundles why what the, who who cares why do you need a booster the booster bundle doesn't matter is it a good price per pack if you can buy them right here yeah pretty decent compared to to, to most other stuff but it's not better it's not better when you take into consideration the other stuff that you can buy and you don't have to like drop down and, and to your knees and, and scream at the sky about how there's no 151 booster bundles. There's Lost Lost Origins awesome. Silver Tempest is awesome. Brilliant Stars is awesome. Crown Zenith, we just mentioned it. Pretty awesome. Scarlet and Violet, underrated. Awesome. No, you shouldn't be buying anything from these machines other than stuff that's a really sick, nasty deal. Uh, but again, Grass Stacking Tin, probably there to save your butt. I would always recommend that you save your money up. If there's a scent that's coming out that you really like, go ahead and place a pre-order. You don't have to do it it's six months in advance. Like, keep an eye on it. Save up your money. Buy some booster bundles for $25 when they were available from PSAPikachu.com. Okay, let's say, like, you missed out on that one. Maybe there's going to be more 151 restocked. I don't, I shouldn't have to tell you that. I shouldn't have to tell anyone that. But either if you're not patient, if you can't wait, if you did, if you missed out on the PSA Pikachu pre order and you weren't in the Discord because there's an event that shows the countdown to when it's going to happen, oh, no big deal. You can just head on over to TCG Player after taking my link. Uh, and you can either you can buy individual packs if that's your your weapon of choice, uh, but also there's lots of other products that have these packs within them. People I don't people don't seem to understand. I don't know what the the appeal is. You can buy booster bundles for a little bit more if you need to. If for some reason you absolutely need the booster bundle, spoiler: there's nothing in there other than the six packs. So you can pretty much get just as good of a deal breaking down an elite trainer box. Maybe you don't want the sleeves. Maybe you don't want the promo. The promo is very cheap now, so the promo isn't really a great selling feature on this, but I think I have that somewhere in here. Um, you, the, yeah, the, the promos are mega cheap. Too cheap, I think. The Elite Trainer Box promos from Scarlet and Violet, uh, the regular ones, I think are way too cheap right now. Um, and an awesome value if you're looking for just inexpensive cards. But when you have stuff like the... Uh, you got the uh, the Pokemon Center... Not the Pokemon Center, the uh, Pokemon Ultra Premium Collection, the Pokemon Center stuff. If you want the Pokemon Center stuff, buy it when it comes out. It might restock, it might not, you never know. So if you're really, if you dying to get that stamped promo, to buy it from the Pokemon Center, it's probably never going to be cheaper than that because no one else can can sell it, at least at this point in time. It wouldn't, it wouldn't blow my mind if they all of a sudden uh, liquidated some of that stuff through someone else. If they oopsie doopsie overprinted it, but there's lots of different options here. We got the booster packs. Uh, they're a little expensive here on the uh, Troll and Toad for individual packs. Would not advise. Uh, but when you have stuff like the uh, Ultra Premium Collection, uh, if you break it down, there's 16 packs in there. Save up your money, buy the Ultra Premium. Yeah, get a bunch of extra goodies with it. Don't want the extra goodies? Trade or sell the extra goodies, make the packs even less expensive than the booster bundle that you were uh, losing your mind over at the store because someone bought them all. Or just wait for the booster. If, if for some reason you really want the little cardboard shell that's on the outside, uh, I'm sure there's lots of people that can uh, give those to you. Or you can you can hold out because they'll there'll almost certainly be more printed. A lot of those specialty sets, the ones that are boner jamming to the extreme, they're going to reprint them. There's going to be more of it. Maybe it'll be in different products. But again, the uh, your, your Scarlet and Violet 151 Ultra Premium Collections. Um, remember, take an extra 5% off if it's on Troll uh, with code RATTLE5. But these are going to be, breaking this down is going to be better value. 
So maybe you don't want 16 packs. Maybe you don't want 16 packs all at once. Save up your money. Buy the bigger product. Break it down. If you don't want the playmat, trade the playmat to someone. If you don't want the promos, trade the promos to someone. Sell the promos to someone. Yeah, you'll you'll all of a sudden end up with packs that are less expensive. It's a lot of that. It's just like people want the the thing that's the thing. They want they only want the evolving skies, but they don't want a product that has evolving skies for some reason. That's at that point, it's like it's it's too much work. Even though the 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 price per pack can be cheaper than than that individual one. Uh, again, make some friends. You probably can make some friends that will want the other packs. Sell them some, trade them, whatever you got to do. Next. I know they're only promos, but I like the look. Also, when sets are new, like it, it blows my mind how much like people will forget about everything except the new shiny thing. And, and with and how 151 will also be forgotten at some point. It'll be, oh, what the hell? I don't want that anymore. It's old news. Next, we have, I think we have some like really cool like budget kind of stuff coming up, which is awesome to see. Love to see it. Uh, this is one of them. They say, I know they're only promos, but I like the look. This is cool. This is uh, this is sick. I don't know where they got the case um, or, or, or what, whether, but to have all the evolutions in there, all the promos, all the Sword and Shield promos kind of together, uh, similar to that product that had them all like pinwheeled around or whatever they did. That was pretty cool. Dragonair for life a8904 says you don't have to apologize cool cards are cool cards whether they're rare vintage stuff or modern promos that's one of my favorite parts of the hobby so many different ways to appreciate it it'd be cool to see this side by side with i the um the sylveon collection uh with all the evs in it uh except they have all the evs except the sylveon is like an xy promo i think the rest of them are black and white i think that's what it is but uh but yeah, be cool to see this next to that. Uh, it would make for a cool piece if you're an evolution collector. Those are going to be a whole lot more expensive than these. Uh, I can't remember how much they are, but uh, again, it's it's obtainable. Next, we have Bolivian Meat Missile. Oh my god, that username. Should I snag any of these? I live in Japan. This always blows my mind. It's like, hey guys, what should I buy off the shelf here? What Do you want any of it? Or you just want to see if other people want any of it? So, um, I don't know. I do like, I can't tell what store this is either. They got like game up on the top. They got a blue car. I'm not sure what store this is, but like the prices are not like blow your, blow your wiener off extremely good. I mean, if that's the thing too, it's just like, is there certain stuff that you want to open? Like bringing it back to Japan. Do you want to, do you want to open some English cards while you're, and I, I assume they like the U.S. or something. Trying to try. Does anyone know where this is? They got barbecues over here, so I don't know if it's. I don't know what this is. I thought maybe it was like a Toys R Us or something at first, but yes, we have Toys R Us still in Canada. I don't know where this is. I don't know what this is. We got Christmas Dark. It could be some like weird store that just sells everything, but maybe maybe it blows my mind. So uh, the answer to that is. If you want any of it, yes. Uh, th is there anything screaming like, oh, you gotta buy me now kind of thing? No, not really. Um, for some reason, booster bundles are the only 151 product that people want, as we uh, as we saw recently. Don't you dare buy a Zapdos EX box. You don't want the promos. You want nothing inside the box. Um, these are cool. The My First Battle. These were like $10 Canadian. I don't know. $10, $10 dollars Canadian. I haven't opened them yet, but uh, I think these are cool value. They got different artwork on it. It's supposed to be like a, it's like the uh, the Battle Academy, but uh, like a very beginner version of of that. So cool. You got the starters in there, that kind of stuff. Todd Chris says, "I swear this looks like the military exchange." It is. Oh well, there, that answers our question. It's the military exchange. Neat. Um. But, but yeah, I, I don't, I'm not sure. Get what you want. No one can tell you what you want. I mean, if you're just looking for people to tell you, like, there's a sick deal on any of this stuff, you need to have this because it's got the best things in it, um, then um, I don't see a whole lot there that's like, you need to buy this, and you're going to stunk dog if you do. 
Next one, we have Mr. Puff Puff 196, who says current count 103, a unique Slowpoke Bro slash King cards. Cool. That's a, I don't know if I've ever seen any um, slow collectors. Found a copy of the Pokemon Heroes movie for $3 at Goodwill, but it still has the two OG promos. Man, that is sick. I don't, I don't know if these would have been in like a cellophane originally, but this is pretty cool. Um, I never thought to to check. Um, Pokemon Heroes, probably my favorite Pokemon movie. And no, it's not because Ash ends up banging a laddie ass in it. Spoiler alert. Um, I just I really like the movie. It's, it's pretty good uh, if you haven't seen it. I did watch all of the movies when I was going through and catching up and watching, uh, like rewatching. Uh, start to finish all of the uh, the anime episodes. Did watch the movies as well. Uh, would recommend. It's a lot though. Just a, just a heads up. But uh, if you hack away at it, it's kind of cool. You see what you missed out on. You see kind of uh, the different generations, the different characters. I think the characters mostly is like a big, it's like a cool thing uh, when you see the new sense come out in the TCG and you're like, oh yeah, the old characters are there and people are like, who the hell is, who the hell is this guy? But you're an expert because you indulged in every single episode of Pokemon. Uh, and that makes you better than everyone. Next, Co Coqueta says, finally completed the trio with a $22 bargain Vaporeon. Again, beautiful cards. Uh, these were like a weird thing where I think they were pretty available and then they weren't really available and they kind of trickled out. So then the price of them went up. But again, budget-wise, $22. Vaporeon, beautiful card, alt art essentially. No, it's not alt art rarity because it was a promo in a box that you got every time with the box. The box was pretty expensive to begin with. It had quite a few packs in there. Um, these are awesome though. Love these. Kind of a shame that they weren't in a set. Extra shout out to Flareon VMAX where we tried to make that deck work. And when it worked, oh my god, did it ever slam buns. Leo says, these have got to be the best promos of all time. I don't know why I didn't stock up on more when they were cheaper. Super lucky I've gotten a box set at retail and then bought singles of each to have the cards and they were way lower back then. Yeah, um, it's weird. I mean, some of that stuff, um, yeah, yeah, stocking up on it is like hindsight kind of thing. It's it, it's one of those things that they could have printed a jillion babillion uh, and they would have been cheap forever or they don't print very many and they end up being expensive. Uh, typically, like the larger or the more expensive boxes seem to be printed less, less likely, less likely to be printed. Other than the weird, like, that Sam's Club, was it Tyranitar thing that, uh, that they came out with again uh, that has different packs in it this time, that's advertised as different packs. Uh, that they're just using as kind of a clear out item. It's hard to tell what's going to get, you know, another wave or another jillion waves. But uh, regardless, uh, even at $22, if you're happy with it, if it's going in the collection, uh, this is a, that's a great a value purchase. Even if it, even if they printed a bunch more and the price dropped like crazy, awesome, saw some deal. Uh, so we were talking about the, uh, the, the, I guess the value, the promos, like these seem too cheap. The UPC ones, uh, but even then, if you're taking another, you know, ten plus dollars off of your uh, UPC purchase, uh, if you sell somebody the promos, sick. Uh, let's say you get like the most mint, most well centered, awesome, awesome copies of these. Maybe you grade them. Maybe you you trade them to somebody that wants to grade them. Uh, you get the Snorlax promo. The, what is going on with the ETB promos? Like there, there is no way this should be ninety nine cents. 94 cents after you use code rattle rattle five how i get that there's like a stamped more desirable more rare more sought after version but like in terms of value like 94 cents for the snorlax you get the little diglet that's going up to him and i guess he doesn't want to doesn't want to go underneath him because he'll get crushed i don't know what the story is he's got the pidgey on his belly awesome card also what the hell is going on with these Yu-Gi-Oh packs? This is this is this makes me want to open Yu-Gi-Oh packs. We got a dollar twenty-nine for this Power of the Elements Unlimited Edition Booster Pack Yu-Gi-Oh. But in, in general, a lot of the promos. Um, I just that was the point of including this in my slideshow here. A lot of the promos here, just really really good deals uh, on on stuff that's just beautiful artwork. Like you don't have it doesn't have to be the most expensive card to be to be desirable to be. Don't worry about it. If you like it, buy it. It's 90, it doesn't matter if it's 94 cents. It's a friggin' sick card. 
All right, what well, we got? Poor eBay etiquette or scummy eBay seller. So here we have ended Pokemon base. Good evening. Would you take 500 European dollarinos for this? No worries if not. I'll keep an eye on the auction. So they say, good morning. Bit of an eBay rant. But I'll keep it brief. I won a Shadowless Blastoise PSA 9 on Monday evening after the seller put it up for a 24-hour auction. I couldn't believe my luck. I tried to offer the eBay seller a buy it now to end the auction early to secure the sale, but they wanted to let the auction run as they believed it could achieve more, which I agreed with. So this part here, they can't really end the auction early uh, if there's bids on it, uh, Not at least not without uh, facing some sort of like repercussions. Um, eBay does not like it when you all of a sudden take down an auction that people were bidding on. They don't like it when you decide to cancel an auction. They don't like that stuff. So if you have somebody that's doing that thing, doing doing anything like that, they didn't get the price that they wanted, tough shit, that, then don't auction it. Um, just report them. Report them for it. And just That's all you got to do. After running the auction for 460 European dollarinis, I was... Chuffed to bits with what I thought to be a bargain just before Christmas. Little did I know what the seller was then planning to do. I woke up this morning to a notification that the sale had been cancelled as requested by the buyer and a message from the seller. See, a conversation attached. Obviously, it didn't achieve what the seller thought it would. It should achieve, and they since cancelled it for that reason. At the end of the day, everyone knows if you want to achieve the best price at auction, list it for a 7 to 10 day auction ending on a Sunday evening typically not a 24 hour auction ending on a Monday besides if they had a figure in mind they should have used the reserve feature when listing so people don't use the reserve feature because it costs money that's the answer to that I just wanted to get your opinions on whether this is a scummy eBay seller or just bad etiquette thank you a rant over so uh, yes it is Seller's wrong, you list something and it sells, you ship the item, no questions asked, that's the cost of business. So if they keep doing this, like they'll end up uh, getting uh, repercussioned by eBay. Uh, but do make sure that you report them for it. Just say like, okay, seller canceled it on me because they didn't like the price. Uh, they can only do it so many times, I think. And having that report there, even if they don't do something immediately, if they keep doing it to other people, it's good for eBay to have a record of that. So even even though you can't leave negative feedback to a... Well, I guess in this instance, you can... You probably... Can you still... You can probably, even though they canceled it, still leave... Feed, if you can leave feedback for this transaction, uh, do just say, like, seller ended it because they didn't like the price uh, in, in the feedback. Uh, but also just report them uh, to, to eBay and... I, I don't know why people do this to themselves, um, why they think it's a good idea to auction things off if, they, if they're not happy with any price that it, that it obtains. It blows my mind, but people don't make sense. Next, Blogger Zen, who says, I painted Pikachu with a gray felt hat for my fiance's Christmas gift. They really wanted the card, but due to obvious reasons, couldn't get it. All right, no, 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 no. I believe in you. You can do it. You can get one. So I made this for them instead. Please go easy on me. This was my first time at painting. Um, so, yes. I, I feel like if... Um, okay, we're using model miniature paint on on a canvas. It is very cool that you, you did paint them one, uh, but I believe in you. Um, if they want one, if you want one, you can do it. You can, you can afford the Pikachu. Um, Maybe not 10 years, 20 years from now when it's even more expensive, um, I'm assuming, provided it uh, it doesn't get mega reprinted to the extreme. Okay, it says, fiance, can we get a felt Pikachu with hat? You, we have felt, <laughs> felt Pikachu hat at home. The felt Pikachu with hat at home. I <laughs> can't tell if this is a good or bad thing. Um, so I, I believe in you. You're, you're an adult uh, because you have a, a fiance. Hopefully you're an adult. Um, otherwise I have questions, but, um, you, you can do it. I believe in you. If you took the time to paint this, uh, I believe that you have the ability to get your significant other, uh, a card that is, uh, is it expensive for what it is and how it was released and that it was f supposed to be free? Absolutely. Uh, but this is one of those things where like, oh, I'll never be able to afford it. You can, I believe in you. Um, yes, you might have to work hard. You might have to, you might have to do work of some kind. You might, I don't say you might have to sell some artwork, but you might have to, 
you might have to work hard. You might have to go work, maybe work an extra shift if you're working. Maybe do some work on the side. Maybe there's some kind of something that you can... Um, don't sell your body for it. Obviously, it's, my God, it's not that... Guys, it's not that expensive. And this isn't one of those like, oh yeah, it's $10,000 or something like... And it's 120 bucks. You can do it. I believe in you. You can save up. It's a Christmas gift. It's the person you love. Hopefully you love them. Um... I mean, you can do it. It's achievable. Uh, you might have to go on eBay. Maybe you can't get it for free. It sucks that it's $120, but you can do it. I believe in you. Everyone believes in you. That's all I got for today. I think that's enough. Uh, that's enough Reddit for now. You guys stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll probably have some more uh, Sean Basic, everyone's favorite scum daddy. I'll see you there. Join the Discord. See you next time. Bye.